We have to thank Bernard Chapin at Chapin's Inferno, a wandering cauldron of politically incorrect commentary. And uh, you could go to his YouTube channel. Just look up Bernard Chapin. It's spelled the way it sound. But <laughs> I was listening to one of his podcasts, and um, I completely forgot about it. But uh, we got the new book, Black Man's Guide Out of Poverty. And uh, look at that. Marcus being all badass. Anyway, did a great job on the cover there for me. Uh, <clears throat> so he, he was talking about how I wrote this book. And it, it's already gotten some backlash, which, which was to be expected. I was expecting this. But he pointed out something that I really hadn't thought much. Uh, already I've been accused of being a racist. Well, I've been accused of being a racist my entire life because I'm white, of course. Uh, but the book has, you know, for me writing this book, they said, well, that's racist. And he pointed out that a book called The Black Man's Guide Out of Poverty that is intended to help blacks is called Racist. And it's, it's a sad testament to just how far brainwashed society has gotten. It's racist now that you can't help out a person that's not your skin color? Really? So is it racist like I'm, uh, like I'm uh, short a buck for a McDonald's burger or something, and the guy behind me who happens to be black is, oh, I got it, here's your buck. Is that racist because he helped me out? The, what and what? It, what we have? What the reason I bring this up and reason pointed out is society really needs to take a look. Not the conservatives, not the libertarians. I, I I know we have it, but society really needs to take a mirror and look at itself. Because if we're to the point that helping other people out is considered bigoted simply because they're of a different race or a different creed or whatever, there's mental problems. There is there is a social wide, a society wide mental problem, and it's a handicap on top of it because. Here, the book, uh, among many other things, that one of the general premises is that what we're doing right now isn't working. Black standard of living are still, as a percentage of white, everybody's standards of living has been going up because technology. It's not that you can prevent people. Oh, you can't have a cell phone, you know, stuff like that. Everybody's standards of living are going up, but black standards of living as a percentage of white standards of living, you have to use whites as a baseline. That gap has not closed. It actually has gotten a little bit worse under Barack Obama. Anyway, larger point is, I wrote this book because I wanted to close that gap. I wanted to raise black people's standards of living, but specifically men in this case, women I might work a, a different project later. Uh, but um, that, that's, that's the noble, honorable, and I don't even want to say noble and honorable, it was just economically, it was a curiosity. I was like, okay, as an economist, what could I do? What, 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 I, what, what big challenge out there is solvable, I think is solvable? Well. I think this might actually be solvable. I wouldn't have written the book otherwise. Larger point being, it's just amazing that, that you do something like this and you're called a racist. You know what, society? Fuck you. No, I'm not. It's, <laughs> you're the one with the problem. And people in this country have got to realize just how far, and not far, but completely twisted and screwed up, the left has made everyone through politically correct thinking to the point that we are not even allowed to help each other. That that help is bad. That the different ideas are racist. Oh, my God. So, I mean, it's just proof just how sick and what a problem, what a hurdle we got to, to overcome this when we can't speak bluntly or truthfully and truthfully assess what the problems might be within different groups of people. It doesn't, black poverty is one thing, but um, again, the female wage gap, there's another perfect example. You come in there and say, women major in easier subjects, and that explains the majority of the wage gap. Oh my God, you're a sexist. It's like, no, if I was a sexist, if I was a true sexist, I'd keep telling them, yeah, major in stupid liberal art shit. Yeah, you go follow your heart and your money will follow. That will actually, that's actually genuinely sexist. Lying to them, telling them pretty sweet lies, right? It's the same thing. Do you want? It's all truth, people. You're not going to solve problems. We're not going to close any gaps. We're not going to close any uh, performance gaps or, or wealth gaps or income gaps. Or we're not going to improve. No one can improve, regardless of race, gender, uh, sex, whatever, if you don't adhere to the truth. I mean, it's, it's an amazing. It's like it's like the wild west. It's not even the wild west. It's like pioneer days. There's no one else out here. It, it's it's like you know. Well, there are a couple people, of course. You know. People who do speak uh, the blunt, candid truth. Uh, but it's amazing how, how everyone is so afraid. So, it's, oh, I know you'll lose your job. But, but it shows you just, just what a horrible thing political correctness has done, uh, preventing people from actually achieving and succeeding because certain truths have been deemed politically incorrect. And we, we got to keep people ignorant and under the thumb of leftist oppression. Keep them on the voting block. Keep them on the voting plantation uh, uh, just so certain people can stay in power. Anyway, I just want to point that out. This book, 
the black man's guy out of poverty is racist. Now you think long and hard about what that means. Not about me or the book, but what society has come to to call that racist. Anyway, oh, you can find it on Amazon.com. Best of luck to all of you. Toodles.